This is a Harley Davidson Softail, and it's been sitting all winter long, and the battery is completely dead. Um, it's so discharged that it won't even light the security light, a uh, little LED blinking light. Um, uh, it, discharging the battery this much is not something you want to do. Uh, it shortens the life of the battery, and uh, if you can, it's best to, if you have to park your bike to, you know, in the wintertime, it's best to have a trickle charge charger on the battery and keep it charged um, throughout the year. Um, to get this battery out, the first thing you want to do is remove these um, battery cables, and you always want to remove the pos uh, uh, the negative first. That way, when you're if you if you remove the positive first, and you have your screwdriver touched to the battery, and you accidentally touch the frame, you're going to short circuit the battery. It's the same as if you just took the screwdriver and and uh, just uh, crossed crossed the poles. So um, always take your um, Always take your negative terminal off first. Also, when you're when you're you know dealing with these batteries, if you've got corrosion on it, you want to clean the terminals. Um, baking soda and water is good for that. All right, I am going to pull this battery out, and then I'll show you how to uh, how to inspect the battery and get it ready to charge. Uh, the first thing you need to do when you get the battery out is put some gloves on and some eye protection so you don't get sulfuric acid on your skin because um, it burns. Uh, our ultimate goal here is to check the battery with a load tester. You can find these load testers at most auto parts stores. Um, but in order to do that, the battery must be at least 75% charged, otherwise uh, you can damage the battery. And the reason the load tester is so important is because it tells you the condition of the battery. Uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, find out the specs of the battery. Um, uh, find the cold cranking amps, and if you can, find the amp hours. Uh, the most important is the cold cranking amps, and what that means is it's the amount of amps this battery can put out for 30 seconds at 0 degrees Fahrenheit and still maintain 7.2 volts across the terminal. Um, amp hours is, uh, is the amount of steady amps the battery can put out for, um, usually they usually use 20 hours, so um, for a 20 hour period. Uh, so for instance, if you have, uh, at, while still maintaining 10.5 uh, volts across the terminals, so if you had a 40 amp hour battery, it, what it means is this, the battery could put out uh, two amps for t every hour for 20 hours and still maintain 10.5 volts across the terminal. After you find out the specs of the battery, um, if you got a conventional type battery that isn't maintenance free, like this one, uh, you want to make sure that the water level in each cell is up to the upper mark. Um, this is a 6 volt battery, but you, you'll probably have a 12 volt battery, so you'll have uh, six different cells to check. So you'll have six different yellow caps on the top here that you can remove and put water in the battery. Uh, this battery here is maintenance free. It's also an AGM battery. Um, AGM stands for absorbent glass mat. Uh, they, they're just a better all around battery than the conventional type batteries. Um, they're still a lead acid based battery, um, but there's, there's, no, there's nothing to spill out. They can be placed in any position. Um, just a better all around battery. Next thing you want to do is determine the no load voltage across the battery. Um, it just that just tells you the state of charge. It doesn't tell you the condition of the battery. That's why we, we want to ultimately use a load tester to find out the condition of the battery, but we need to charge the battery uh, to use the load tester. Um, there's two ways to determine the state of charge. Uh, one is to just use a voltmeter to, raise, to measure the voltage across the terminals of the battery, and the other way of doing it is to use a hydrometer. Um, these are three different examples of hydrometers. I use this one because it's small and I can get into in, into the opening uh, of six volt batteries to draw the fluid out. Um, this is just another type of common one that you see at auto parts stores. Um, the best one I have is this one here. Um, it's got a temperature temperature gauge um, so I can make adjustments to the reading and then it's got a little floating uh, glass piece inside that uh, will tell me the exact number of the specific gravity. Uh, the specific gravity tells you the charge of the battery, and it's able to do that by um, 
determining the percent of sulfuric acid in the water electrolyte solution. Uh, by, sulfuric acid is more dense than water, so um, uh, by knowing the weight of the solution, you can determine the percent of sulfuric acid to water. And the more sulfuric acid you have, the higher the charge. Um, it's going to give you a number, a decimal number. Um, if you get a number of 1.265 or higher, it's a fully charged battery. Um, if you get a number that's uh, 1.225, that's a, a battery that's 75% charged in that cell. Um, and then anything below that, you need to charge the battery. Also, uh, temperature makes a difference. Um, if, if for every 10 degrees above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to add 0 .004 to the reading. And for every uh, 10 degrees below 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to subtract 0 .004. When you use a hydrometer, you're going to have to take a reading in each cell of the battery. So if you have a 12-volt battery, you're going to have six cells. Um, if your highest reading and your lowest reading is greater than 0 .050, uh, you can throw your battery away. Uh, the battery is no good. Um, that's one advantage of using a hydrometer is it will tell you, tell you something like that as opposed to um, just using a voltmeter, which would just tell you the state of charge. Um, here's an example. I'll, uh, this is a maintenance-free battery, but I'm able to get the caps off of this battery. And uh, this is this each hole represents one cell of the battery, so I've got six of these. And then I would just stick my hydrometer in the hole and, and suck out the fluid. Uh, I don't know if you can see. I'm sure you can't see this in the um, in the in the camera, but I'm getting a reading of a 1.20, which is discharged, um, and my temperature is is around 80 degrees, so I don't need to add or subtract anything. But I would do this with each cell and record each number, and then I can determine from all the numbers the state of charge of the battery. Since the battery I'm using is a maintenance-free AGM battery, um, I don't have any fluid to check with a hydrometer, so I'm going to use uh, my only choice to check the state of charge is to use a voltmeter. So I'm going to do that now. And you want to you want to make sure um, you put the red with a positive and black with a negative. Uh, if you if you cross them, you'll just get a negative number, but you'll get still get a the magnitude of the number will be the same. And for this battery, I'm getting a reading of 4.24, which is definitely discharged. Um, so I need to charge this battery. Now that we know that the battery needs to be charged, we can determine uh, how many amps and for how long we want to charge the battery for. Um, if you know the cold cranking amps, uh, you can determine the, the, the amperage by, it's 1% it's of the cold cranking amps, um, and you want to charge it for three to five hours. Uh, since this is 365 amps, uh, cold cranking amps, it would be uh, 3.6 uh, amps for, for three to five hours. Um, if you know the amp hours, it's uh, one tenth of the amp hours for uh, three to five hours. So if, if, if for it says you had a 40 amp hour battery, um, you could charge it at, at four amps for, for three to five hours. Um, however, uh, from personal experience uh, with these motorcycle batteries, I never charge over two amps um, because going any higher, I, I, I've seen the batteries heat up. You don't want the battery to get warm while you're charging it. Um, you want to periodically check it. Uh, battery heating up can, can warp the plates of the battery and ruin the battery. It also causes a conventional battery to uh, gas. So um, that's something you want to avoid. So I always stay, stay around two amps. This is the battery charger I like to use. Um, it's a Black & Decker smart charger. Um, I've had it for years and it's always, it's always given me trouble free, trouble free uh, charging. Um, it allows me to charge wet batteries, which is your conventional type battery, gel type batteries, or AGM batteries. Um, it has three amp settings, uh, two, two, 10, and 15. Um, I almost never use the 10 and 15 because I don't want the battery to overheat, um, especially on these motorcycle batteries. I always set it at the two amp position. Um, this is a microcontroller controlled battery. Um, the problem with using this batter, the battery charger is if your battery is really low, it will automatically uh, declare your battery dead and you should throw it away, which isn't true. So in order to use this battery, I've got to get the voltage up on these really uh, low voltage batteries. Um, and in order to do that, I use this manual uh, one amp slow charge. 
I'll set this on the battery for um, two or three hours and, and try and get the voltage back up to above 12 volts. And then I'll switch to the Black & Decker uh, smart charger. Um, this battery charger has a voltage setting. I also use it because it has a six volt, um, six volt uh, setting. And, and, and it's good because it only puts out one amp so I don't have to worry as much about overheating the battery or overcharging the battery. Um, so I guess the next thing to do is I'll set this up and charge this for two or three hours and then I'll come back and, and put on the Black & Decker charger and uh, uh, get this battery charged back up and then we'll do a load test. Uh, the amount of time it's taking to charge this battery up to a level where my smart, smart charger will finish charging it um, is taking a lot longer than I anticipated. So what I did is I went ahead and I charged this auto battery up so I can demonstrate how to use the load tester. Um, I used the smart charger for that. Um, the advantage about using this charger is you can just set it for, for the amount of amps you want and it will automatically adjust uh, to the correct amount of time. It monitors the battery voltage so um, it will shut down, automatically shut down when the battery is charged. If I had a fully automatic, um, full, I mean a fully manual uh, battery charger, I would use the formula that I mentioned earlier uh, to charge the battery. If I had a really small battery like a motorcycle battery, I'd keep it like around 2 amps and I'd maybe charge it for three to five hours depending on uh, the condition of the battery when I start and then I uh, just keep my eye on the battery I don't want the battery to overheat and I don't want it to overcharge and those are the two things you want to look out for um, but to use this load tester you need to determine uh, you need to get the cold cranking amps of the battery which is it's written on here is 450 uh, cold cranking amps then take your load load tester uh, connect red to positive uh, black to negative and then um, find your cold cranking amps on the scale and then hold down this button for 10 seconds and uh, the needle should stay in the green wherever that scale is for your battery. So let's go start now. So it's, uh, it's good, it's, it's a good battery, the condition's good and the charge is good. Um, this isn't the ideal um, type load tester. It's a cheaper version. Um, if I had the more expensive one, uh, the more expensive ones will let you adjust the load so you can uh, adjust how many amps you're drawing from the battery. Uh, the rules are for those, uh, you want the amperage to be one half the cold cranking amps or three times the amp hours with a minimum of 150 amps. Uh, and, and when using those, you want to want to hold it, you want to turn those on and draw that draw that amperage for 15 seconds and then have a voltmeter also connected to the battery um, it's usually just part of one the one system so you can read the voltage while you're using the the load the load uh, tester but you want the you want the voltage during the test to maintain above 9.6 volts so um, anyway that's how you check a battery uh, I hope this uh, video was helpful and I thank you for watching